Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So in honor of Father's Day, we thought we would come to you guys with a video all about beds in romance books. <laughs> All right, before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are still doing our Road to 1K giveaway, and we still have prizes that we are giving away as we whoop, whoop, as we get down the road. So we'll be showing you what that is in the next couple of videos, because we hopefully have already given away our 250 um, gift, and we're working on our next level, which is 500. And also, All right, Jessica. Question. What? Do what? any of your dads for Father's Day in this have dad bods? Hell no. Mine either. <laughs> they better not. <laughs> All right. So the first dad that I have is Sam from The Third Storm, which is a trilogy by Liz Hamilton. Mm. Good yeah. Choice. It's a good choice. I think it is. Okay. So this, The Third Storm is um, a post-apocalyptic romance. It is a trilogy, but this is about a, a girl. She's an aunt. She's got two boys, um, her her nephews. Uh, she calls them Baloo, but it's Bo and Lewis. And then she, her name is, I think it's Riley. Rowan. Her name is Rowan. I need to start with an R. So her name is Rowan. And when the book starts out, we are, there's been all these storms that have just ravaged the world and she's trying to get to this boat because there's flooding and all this stuff going on and she's been told by someone to get there she has to have like a military clearance and she was told to use this girl's name this girl had not survived but she was a wife and a husband and then she had two children and so along the way they come across this guy who is unconscious and injured in a ditch and she is like let's just get these kids to the boat like we're just trying to survive the kids are like, no, we won't go if you don't pick up this guy. Like, we're we're going, we're not going until you pick him up. And so she figures out a way to get him into their jeep, and then they off they go. Um, when she gets there, she has to pretend they have to pretend that that is her husband. He's still unconscious at this point, but in order to get him on the ship, she has to be like, yep, this is my husband Sam, and these are my kids. And then they get onto the ship. And so when he wakes up. He just accepts that very quickly. They're in a survival situation. They're in survival mode. And so he knows that he has to be a dad to these kids. But as the books go on, he actually becomes a dad to, to, to Lewis and Bo. And he is actually a very, very good dad to these kids. So, and he's a great husband too, when you really get down to it. But yeah. So I love post-apocalyptic if it's done right. This one was done really well. All right. Okay. So <laughs> my first father mm -hmm. is Elijah from One Percent of You by Michelle Gross. And I think I have been trying to get you to read this book for a while. And you have there's not. a lot that you've been trying to get me to read, but I swear my TBR is like a thousand plus at this point. So yeah. All right. So one person of you is about Hadley. And Hadley has a three-year-old daughter and she's very young. Like she had her pretty close out of high school. She has a boyfriend and he is just not really there. She's really pulling the weight. She is going to school. She is working to be a nurse and she is the primary caregiver and he just doesn't do a lot. She's also pregnant because she wants her kids to be close together. And she comes home one day a little early and finds him with another chick. So she's like, I'm done. You're out, get out. And so now she's trying really hard, like she's pregnant, she has a three-year-old, but she's going to stick to her goals, she's going to get through nursing school, and she's going to make a better life for her kids. And in moves the grumpy neighbor next door, Elijah. And Elijah actually gets in a fight with her three-year-old daughter at the supermarket over the last bag of chips. He admits that this might not have been his finest moment. But it still happens. And why I picked Elijah, because you're thinking, wow, he just fought with a three-year-old over chips in a grocery store. Well, <laughs> he starts to see Hadley a little bit different. At first, he judges her like most people do, young, single mom with two kids, that sort of thing. And he really kind of starts to take a liking to her and he, you know, helps her out a few times and does some things for her. 
And they start to kind of have a friendship and slowly that friendship evolves. It's a very slow burn, but the way their relationship comes about and to watch Elijah go from this grumpy guy who's going to argue over chips to a very caring man who cares about these kids is incredibly sweet. So that is why I picked him for my first father in our Father's Day video. The book is fantastic. And you love like the grumpy man and kids and books. So you would really I like do. I do. I do. I need to read that one. I'm you all about do. the grumpy dads. And even like adoptive dads or stepdads. So yeah. Okay. My next one. You're just going to die. <laughs> it's a group of guys. Oh, it sticks and stones. No, it? it's not. No. It's Manix. It's Manix by Grace McGinty. So, I mean, it's a group. This is a reverse harem, but this is a paranormal reverse harem. So, the Manics are a group of shape-shifting, uh, you know, like, guys. They they, they shape-shift into these big old creatures. Uh, but they're supposed to have been extinct. Like, everybody thought they were extinct. And so, then you have our heroine, Naja, who is um, taking care of her younger siblings. And so, she is stripping. And these guys actually show up. And so, when they're in their human form, they're very human. They're just big just big and hot um but she they go to a strip club one night and she's there she's dancing and she gets down to just her thong when they realize that she is an omega so this kind of brings in that omega verse as well it really actually does bring in the omega verse as well they realize she's an omega and they realize that she is compatible with them so they steal her they kidnap her in nothing but a thong from a strip club and when she gets out to their vehicle, she's like, whoa, wait, I've got, you know, like she realizes they're taking her no matter what, but she's like, I've got siblings and I can't just leave. And they're like, if we don't take you and take care of you, then other people are going to come and it's going to be like other manics are going to realize this because this race is, of creatures is dying out and she is what they need for the continuation of their species. Okay. So these boys, they're very good to her her siblings and, and there's a handful of them but this also has where they have an omega a male omega in their group so this book has impreg in it male pregnancy for those of you who don't know and all they want is babies they want her babies they want her babies so these are the perfect dads because not only do they carry the babies okay you ain't gotta ruin your body for these kids all right they take care of them too yeah because there's more than one of them and so it's so good. <laughs> I think this is the only book I've ever read with impreg in it because it's not something I typically go for, but it it worked for me. Plus they're hot. And his body bounces back so fast I was pissed. So let me just say. <laughs> Did you get this book recommendation from your breeder readers group? No. I don't remember where I got it from, but it was not from my breeder reader. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. It's good. It really is good. I know it sounds crazy. But it's good. It's good. And they're great dads. There's something for everyone out there. Let me just say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mr. Masters is going to seem so tame. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so, my next book is Mr. Masters by T.L. Swan. He is not a shapeshifter. He did not carry the babies himself. In fact, I'm not really sure what he does now. <laughs> he's a judge. And he thought. I know. But does he really bring anything to the table if he's You not know, after Mannix, nope. <laughs> Poor Mr. Masters. All that school. <laughs> and he still is just. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey. So for those of you who are looking for something slightly more traditional, let me tell you about Mr. Master. <laughs> so this is about Brielle and Julian. Brielle lives, I think it's in Australia, and she is just ready for something new. So her and her friend decide to apply to be nannies in England, and Brielle just flat out lies on her application about her qualifications. She's really not qualified, but they're doing this. So off they go, she gets hired and she actually thinks she's going to go work for a woman because there was like a little bit of a typo on the paperwork. So Julian ended up looking like she 
was that this was going to be a woman that she was working for. But it turns out, nope, she's working for Mr. Masters. And as Jessica said, he's a judge. There is an age gap. She's 26. He's 39. And she goes to be a nanny to his two kids. Now, Mr. Masters is not a bad father, but he may not be the most hands-on father at this time when she first gets there. And so part of her nannying is that she's working on like helping the kids a little bit because nobody really knows what happened to Mrs. Masters, their mom, other than she's just gone. So <laughs> uh, she comes and she's nannying and like Mr. Masters is hot. So she's definitely attracted to him, but she's really trying hard to like get the kids out and do stuff with the kids. So she decides to take them to the golf course and Mr. Masters happens to be there golfing with some buddies. And she takes them and she rents a golf court cart and they go off golfing. And this has to be like one of my favorite scenes ever in a book because she ends up accidentally hitting <laughs> Julian with the golf cart and oh, running him over. It is hilarious because she's mortified. He's embarrassed because all his buddies just saw his nanny run over. <laughs> He ends up having to like limp back to the car. I mean, it's just so funny. But they start to have this attraction, but he wants to keep things like very serious and like strictly like you're the nanny. So he ends up emailing her and they meet up off property, like off his estate at a hotel. And they have like little flings, I guess you would say. But at the house, things are strictly like he's the dad, she's the nanny type situation. But eventually that relationship starts to evolve. And this is kind of that story. So the reason I picked Mr. Masters is because he kind of starts off as a little bit more of an uninvolved dad. And this is really like not only the story of those two getting together and dealing with a lot of things because there's age gap and that sort of thing as well, but as well as how they become a family and how he really kind of steps up not only for Brielle, but for his kids as well. Okay. Mr. Masters is hot. He is hot. He is. But <clears throat> but how well does he share? Oh gosh. <laughs> I like I like the no sharing. She is mine and mine alone. Don't look at her or I'll punch you in the face. That's <laughs> what I like. <laughs> it's not what happens in this book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't believe you picked Credence. Nick is a good dad, okay? Because he shares? No, he's really good with his kids. He is a single dad. He's done it on his own. He's he's good. He's a good dad. He does share, but he's They're a good dad. Grown, and they all sleep with the same chick. You know what? No, I like I liked Creedence. I just don't think he's <laughs> I think he's a good dad. He's a good dad. Dad everybody has their flaws, but he sacrificed. I just his want you to apply that boys. to real life for a minute. He sacrifices his happiness for his boys. He does. He really does. Okay, seriously, guys. Credence. If you haven't read it, I don't know what rock you're under, but okay. Um, so this is about Tiernan. She is um, just close to being 18, and her parents end up dying in a double suicide. So definitely check triggers. She finds out that she has, or she knows that she has a step uncle. Her dad has a step brother who lives in Colorado. She lives in California at the time. Her parents were very absent. They were horrible parents. And so she, you know, just has kind of raised herself, but she and her, her uncle is supposed to have custody of her until her step uncle has custody of her until she turns 18. And so he's like, Hey, why don't you just come stay with us? She has never really spent any time with him. She's maybe only met him like, you know, brief meetings. Like she does not have a relationship with this guy. And so he has two boys who are late teens, early 20s, just kind of where she's at. And they live in Colorado. Now they have a dirt bike company where they make their build dirt bikes, um, a custom thing, and they, they race them as well. And they get snowed in every winter. But he's like, hey, come up here. Let's just see how this works out. So she gets up there. There's an attraction between her and her step uncle. So they're not blood related, but there is an attraction. 
and um, their relationship starts to build. But there's also an attraction between the two boys. But the reason why I chose him is not because of the kinkiness that's going on in this book. He is a good dad. He has raised these kids on their own. One of them was severely traumatized as a child, and he has always been there for his boys. He has done a very good job raising them. Yes, he might share with them, and he might actually give up his um, happiness for them to be happy. This is not reverse harem. She does make a decision. She doesn't end up with all of them. All I got to say is family reunions in this house have got to be weird, okay? That's it. That's all I got to say. But he is a good dad. He might not be traditional, but he's good. Okay. My next one is Getting Real by Emma Chase. So this is Connor. Connor might be my wildest father. <laughs> because right. in So if you read the series in order, you see a glimpse of Connor and what he's going through prior. So in a prior book, Connor actually is so devastated that his wife and him are breaking up because she has an affair. And so it's breaking. He's a doctor and she's upset with him that he spent too much time working. And uh, they break up and they have three boys. And he is so devastated by this that he actually takes a chainsaw to their bed and starts sawing it up. So now we're into his book, Getting Real, and he, it's been a little bit of time and he's ready to kind of get back out into the dating pool, but he's, he hasn't dated in a long time because his boys and being a doctor, that's his life. And so he is getting a little bit pressured by his brothers to start dating. And one day he's at the grocery store with one of his brothers and Violet, who is an ER nurse is also at the grocery store and she has had a crush on Connor for a while, but she, like this is on the down low. She doesn't want anybody to know. And she happens to fall flat on her face in the grocery store parking lot and Connor sees. <laughs> so <laughs> from there, Connor goes over to help her, helps get her groceries. It's a little maybe a lot embarrassing. And this is kind of where their story starts, but through the whole book, his focus is his three boys. Like he loves those boys. And so this is him trying to come to terms a little bit with the family that he thought he was going to have isn't the family he's going to have, but that he can still have a family. So I love this story. It was a great listen. I listened to it on Audible. I loved all of them. It was a great series, but Connor's a good dad. Mm -hmm. I remember that one. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. My next one, I think you read that. I know you read this one too. So this is Cassio. Cassio is a good dad in the mafia. I thought about that one. Did you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I love this one. This is my first Cora Riley. This is my first introduction into the mafia world. And then I kind of went down the rabbit hole after this and, and read all of her other books. So this is Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. And this is the story of Julia and Cassio. So when this story opens up, Cassio is, has, is, it's the, his anniversary with his wife and he finds her body. We don't know what happened. We just know that she's died. She's passed away. She's, she's gone. They have at the time a four month old baby girl, three or four month old baby girl. And then like a two year old at home, a little boy. And so in the mafia world, it's not good enough to just have a nanny. He has to have a wife. And that is where Julia comes in. So there is an arranged marriage set up. He, Cassio is in his late 30s, and then you have Julia, who is um, just turning 18. So the day after her 18th birthday, they get married. And she um, knows nothing about taking care of kids. Her parents actually lied to Cassio and told him that she knows what she's doing with kids. He didn't want a widow. He didn't want somebody who had already had a family because he didn't want something. He, he wanted someone who's going to come in and love his kids and not have that that connection um, to another man at some point in time. So he marries Julia and um, there's a lot that comes out. There's, you know, she is young and naive and dumb, but she gets tired real quickly of being treated like a nanny and a child bride. And so she fights for what she wants within this family. She loves these kids, but she fights for him to have a father child relationship and he's been doing a great job of taking care of them up until she comes in but he's also a, 
a, a big mafia boss and he is strapped and he needs this help. And so she comes in and she does that and she takes over the family. She does a very good job of that. But I love their story. I love Cassio. He does love his kids. No matter, I mean, with, he's got flaws, but he loves those babies. And he proves it throughout the book. There's things that come out that you find out. But yes, yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Jessica, my yep. next book is where the daughters are kind of the star of the book. Okay. It's Ignite. I, I was going to say, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> by Melanie Harlow. Yep. So this is about Dex. Dex is a fantastic father. He is adamant that there is no such thing as happily ever after. So he's content being a hot firefighter and taking care of his two girls who are adorable. They spend a lot of their time just roasting their dad. Like he wakes up most mornings to hearing them giggling and talking about like his nose hair and him snoring and things like that. And they're not afraid to share his faults with others, <laughs> <laughs> which is just hilarious. So He's a little grumpy, but he is not grumpy with his daughters. Like he loves them and takes very good care of them. And he's actually upset that him and his ex are no longer together so that he's on a schedule with seeing his daughters. Like it truly bothers him. So he ends up moving into a townhouse condo next door to Winnie. Winnie is only 22. Dex is 12 years older than her. And the girls really take with Winnie. And there's a situation where Winnie uh, has a smoke alarm go off in her house when she is in the shower getting out and he comes running over because he's a firefighter, runs through her door and finds her naked to what she thinks the best approach to this would be to fall down on all fours and crawl out. Because <laughs> that's not going to show anything up. I don't know. So while well, Dex is hellbent on there is no happily ever after in life, Winnie falls in love very easily and she's currently on a bet, like hiatus. She is not going to fall in love. So like she actually has a deal bet made with her friends on this. And Dex starts to have, I guess, lusty feelings would be the best way to describe this. So this is them kind of coming together. But those girls and Dex's love for them really steal the book. Like, it is incredibly good. So if you're looking for something very heartwarming with a little tiny bit of angst, this would be the book to read for Father's Day. All I'm right. sure Jessica will have a much more darker recommendation for you now. I do. I do. I, I really, you know, we, we were really good about making sure that these were fathers and not daddies. <laughs> but did you misunderstand the assignment, Jessica? Do you have a oh, daddy? No, oh, okay. I want, I got extra credit. I got a father and a daddy right here, right here. Oh, Zeus is a good father, but he's a daddy. And you know it. Okay, so this is Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. Again, this is another very popular book. So um, if you haven't read it, I'm not sure where you've been right now. But we're, we're still going to talk about it. So this is about Lou and Zeus. So when Lou is a little girl, um, young, like under the age of 10, I think she's like 8. I could be wrong on the age. But she happens to be in this parking lot and a shootout happens. So um, Zeus is the president of a motorcycle club. And the shootout is between him and another rival club and a rival club. And instead of her parents protecting her, because she has the world's worst parents ever, they actually run in and protect themselves and not their child. So Zeus actually steps in front of a bullet, takes a bullet for her and um, gets sent to prison. And when they take little Lulu to the hospital, they discover that she has cancer and she's been telling her parents forever that she didn't feel good. And her parents just ignore her. Um, and it comes come to find out that she has cancer. So from prison, Zeus, who has two children of his own at home, who one's a little bit older than Lou, one's roughly the same age, he starts writing to Lulu as well. And um, he was pretty reluctant about writing to her because he's an adult writing to a child, but she's very persistent. And so he does, he writes to her for years. They write these letters back and forth while he's in prison. So he writes letters to his kids and he writes letters to Lulu. Now he's married when the book starts or he's 
well, he's had a relationship with his kid's mom at that point, but his kid's mom is horrible. And so he, um, you know, when he gets out, he's, he, even from prison, he's taking care of his kids and making sure that they have a decent life. Now he is a motorcycle club president, so he does have his faults, but you can't deny that he does love and take care of his kids no matter what. But he also takes care of Lulu too. So little Miss Lou, she grows up, she's about 17 when they see each other again. And um, yeah, yeah. It's not so innocent anymore at that point. She has a, uh, uh, the cancer comes back and she decides that she is not going to play it safe anymore. And she's going to go after what she wants and what she wants is big daddy Zeus. And so that is what she goes for. You have to end it on a daddy. He's a daddy, but a dad. And oh my goodness, he's a good dad, but he's a better daddy. Well, I'm not ending mine on a daddy, but I am ending mine on like, I'm, like freaking out about my choice now because I really wanted to do Wit from Unexpected by Elizabeth Alton, but I've talked about that book so much lately because I talked about it for rock stars. It was one of my top May reads. So I'm like, uh, I'm not going to do that, but he is such a great dad in that book, but I decided not to do that. I am going to do Happily Letter After by Vi Keeland and Penelope Ward. I, I went with like sweeter <laughs> dads. Mine just had to be dads and hot. But hey, that is what you get when you come to our channel. You get a very good mixture of books. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. Jessica will surprise you with some sweet stuff. And sometimes I will surprise you with some dark stuff. But you get a really good mixture here. You do. You really do. That's the benefit of having both of us. My next book and my last book for fathers is Happily Letter After by Penelope Ward and by Keelan. This is about Sebastian and his daughter, Birdie. His wife has passed away, so Sebastian is caring for Birdie by himself. And he um, is unaware that Birdie is writing letters into like a Dear Santa type column, even though it's summer. And Sadie works at the paper, and this is one of the columns she does. And she's intrigued that somebody wrote in in summer, and she realizes that it's a little girl. And so she starts granting some of the wishes because they're things like new socks for her dad and some stuff like that. And then she continues to write in, and Sadie kind of feels connected to Birdie because Birdie's mom has passed away, and Sadie's mom had passed away when she was younger as well. So she kind of feels this connection. So she starts kind of doing things and crossing a line to the point that she ends up at their house. <laughs> and she notices something of Sadie's that is laying out on the ground. So she picks it up to go put it on the stoop, right as Sebastian opens the door and he's like, oh good, you're here. You're the new dog trainer. And she kind of just gets sucked in. <laughs> and she pretends to be the dog trainer that tra trains in German. So she's making up German words, making up training. Then he tells her to come back at a certain time. And because she's so drawn to Bertie and Sebastian, she comes back. So she does what anybody would do. She Googles and YouTubes how to train dogs in German. And then she goes back. <laughs> and this continues on. And it is hilarious. There's so many funny things in this book, but I just, I really cared for Sebastian and how he cares for Birdie and just some of the struggles that they're going for. So I really found it. It was a really great book. It's sweet. And then it has um, some great things at the end. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's just a really good feel good Father's Day book. Okay. So that's it. So that is what we have for Father's Day. Um, so these are the fathers, not to be confused with the daddies, but these are the fathers that we have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. And we'll see you guys in the next video.